Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. And this video is going to be a video on the slope deflection method. Uh, we're going to solve for the reactions of this frame, and we do have actually a settlement. So we have a support settlement in this question. So let's take a look at the question. And guys, if you're enjoying the video and you're enjoying our content in our channel, please hit the subscribe button down below. It, uh, it would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, we're asked to determine the member end moments and reactions due to the loading and a support settlement of 50 millimeters at D. Cool, so uh, if you're following our other videos on slope deflection, uh, you'll notice that we ignored the sine phi when we, uh, when we were looking at the slope deflection equations. In this video, we're gonna combine all of those and we're gonna use psi. So if you haven't seen those videos, uh, go back, I'll put them in the description because uh, I'm not gonna really explain them. I'm just gonna go through how to solve this problem because it's a little bit longer than the other ones. So the first step is to find the fixed end moments, okay? So let's go ahead and fi quickly find the fixed end moments, all right? So the fixed end moment for AC, Okay, since we have our point load is going to be in the center, okay, halfway uh, between A and C, that's going to be PL over 8, okay, that's going to be uh, 75 times 6 over 8, okay, and that's simply 56.25 kilonewton meter, okay, and that's equal to negative the fixed end moment of CA, okay, because it's the same, but it's just uh, moments in the opposite direction. Let's find the fixed end moment at CD. So CD is going to be simply WL squared over 12. And uh, if you don't know where these are coming from, uh, there's tables in your textbook and um, in, in previous videos that we did. I'm just kind of skipping this step because it takes a little long. So we have 25 times L here, which is nine meters. Sorry about that. Okay, that's squared over 12. And that's going to be equal to 168.75 kilonewton meter. That's equal to negative fixed end moment of DC. Okay, cool. So uh, we found the fixed end moments real quick. That was good. Now let's go ahead and start by calculating uh, the chord rotation. So that's the chord rotation is psi in this case, and that's this is what this looks like. So we have our frame here, okay? And what we have is we have this support settlement at D. So I'm gonna draw an exaggerated version. So this is point D. Okay, and our support has settled, and the settlement distance is, this is going to be 50 millimeters, okay? And what we are looking for here is this angle of chord rotation, which in, we're going to call in this uh, psi CD. Okay, so that's, uh, that's where psi is, if you were wondering in the slope deflection equations. Okay, so psi CD, okay, is simply the deflection or the displacement of the support divided by the length. So this length here, which is nine meters, okay? And the direction is counterclockwise is positive, and we're measuring it from the x-axis. So since it deflected this way, that's clockwise, it's going to be negative. So we have a negative, uh, the deflection, so delta over L, okay? So that's negative 0 0.05, okay? So we're gonna use meters, okay? Over, make sure the units are the same, okay? So they cancel, that's going to be negative 0 0.00556. So now that we have the chord rotation, we can start by uh, defining our slope deflection equations. And right away, we can recognize that we have an end member here that's a roller. So for member CD, we can use the modified slope deflection equations. For CA, it's not, uh, either end is not a uh, roller. They're both restrained against rotation. So in that case, we're gonna have to use the regular equations. So I'm gonna make a line here so we don't get confused. Okay, so we have our slope deflection equations, okay? And let's go ahead and start with, uh, let's say, member AC, MAC. Okay, so we'll start with MAC, okay? That's going to be 2i, so we're not using the modified equations here, okay? We have 2i EI over L, and that's going to be 2 theta A plus theta C minus 3 psi plus FEM AC. And let's go ahead and fill that in. So we have 2 EI over L, which is in this case, six. Then we have uh, no rotation at A, right? That's zero. We have theta C, which is unknown. We don't have settlement in section AC, so that's zero. And our fixed end moment for AC is simply 56.25. So we've gone ahead and found our first slope deflection equation. I'm just gonna make that in green there. Let's go ahead and start with our second slope deflection equation. So our second slope deflection equation is going to be uh, MCA. So we're starting from C and looking at A now. So we have MCA. OK, 
Okay, that's going to be equal to, I'm just going to fill it in now, 2EI over L is still the same distance. And this time we have 2 theta C, no theta A, and no psi. And we're going to have FEMCA, which is actually just the negative of that one, so that's going to be minus 56.25. Perfect. And let's circle that. Very good. Let's go ahead and find uh, MCD. Okay, so MCD is going to be the modified slope deflection equation. So we have 3EI over L. L in this case is 9. Okay, and if you're not sure what these slope deflection equations are, don't, uh, just go back to the uh, modified uh, video that we had, and that'll go through what, where these are and what the equations are. So we have 3EI over 9, and that's going to be... Um, so we have theta C, okay, because we have the... Uh, just the first subscript here in the modified, minus psi. Okay, in this case we do have a psi. We have the chord rotation, which is negative 0. Point. So that's going to be a positive because it's theta c minus psi, 0, 0, 0, 5, 5, 6. Okay, and that's going to be plus fixed end moment CD. Okay, so fixed end moment CD is 168.75. Minus 168.75 over 2. Right. And finally, uh, the M the MDC okay, is simply 0. As we know from the modified slope deflection equation, we can take advantage of the fact that the roller end moment at D must equal 0. Okay. So here's our other two slope deflection equations there. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 equations. And let's go ahead and rewrite these, and we'll uh, we'll continue. So there we go, guys. I just went ahead and rewrote the uh, the slope deflection equations. I do suggest you go ahead and do that on your own, uh, just for the sake of uh, keeping the video short. I simplified them for you, but go ahead, simplify them on your own. Use these as a guide, and uh, try and get this answer exactly. This one is a little bit tricky, MCD, because you do need to substitute EI in. So remember that you do have the value of EI because you have that uh, that bracketed term that you need to multiply out, and uh, you do need to substitute EI in there, and that's going to affect this uh, constant number on the end. So now that we have the slope deflection equations, let's go ahead and find out our equilibrium equation. And uh, well, this one varies a little bit. This is a little bit different than when we had a continuous beam with a roller in the center, because at the roller we knew the sum of the moments was zero. Um, and actually at a rigid frame like this, where we have a rigid uh, a joint here that's rigid at C, the moments at C also need to be equal both to zero. So that's what we're going to use whenever you see a frame like this. That can be your equilibrium equations. Uh, so we have MCA plus MCD is equal to zero. And we're using that, we can go ahead and we can start to plug in values. So let's go ahead and plug in our MCA. Okay, so we have... And we know that that is equal to zero. Okay, and if we go ahead and we add these, all right, and we subtract, uh, we add uh, 401.4 minus 56.25, uh, and we solve for EI theta C, we're going to get that EI theta C is equal to negative 345.15 kilonewton meters squared. Going ahead and plugging back into uh, these equations here, so we're going to take this value, and we're going to like we did in the other uh, slope uh, deflection equation questions, we're going to plug that into here, here, and here, and we're going to solve for the moments at, um, we're going to go ahead and solve for the moments at the, uh, the ends of the members, and then we can solve for the reactions. So, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and write those down for you. Go ahead, stop the video now if you'd like, and, uh, and pause. See if you want to, uh, see if you can plug that in and get the same answer. It's good practice. Okay, so we're going to have MEC of and we've gone ahead and solved for the member and moments. Awesome. And what can we do now with this? Well, we can go ahead and we can start to uh, plug those into our broken up beam and we can start to derive uh, the, or we can find the member end forces and the member end moments and the reaction. So let's go ahead and do that now. I just drew out the uh, the broken up beam here, so we have the member end forces, and what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're just going to put those moments, these moments, onto the the broken up beam here. So this is an important uh, step. You need to know what direction is positive, which direction is negative, and um, especially for these vertical members because that's where you can make some mistakes. Okay, so let's put MAC on the beam here. We have a negative moment of negative uh, fifty eight point six. So we have our fifty eight point six here. Okay, so uh, we have a positive moment here, okay, uh, clockwise member, uh, clockwise moment, because 
As you can see, we have a negative moment here, and we are assuming that positive is our counterclockwise. So let's we filled that in. We have MCA, which is going to be here, and that's going to be negative 286.4. Okay, and then we have a positive moment CD of 286.4. Perfect. And now, um, if we want to go ahead and find the reactions, we're going to need to go ahead and take some moments. All right, so uh, we have our 75 kilonewton force here. Perfect. Uh, if we go ahead and take the moment about A, for example, I'm just going to do one and then I'll fill the rest in for you because this takes a little while and this video is already kind of long. Okay, so if we take the moment about A, we have this negative moment here. So we have 58.6. We have a free moment here as well of 286.4. Okay, we have a negative moment of, and this is three meters, right, okay, of negative 75 times three. And then remember, we have uh, we have two reactions here, and usually the reactions uh, are going to make uh, like an opposite moment, in this case, when the frame is, uh, is broken up. So if the moment is put twisting it this way, the reactions are usually gonna go the other way because it's the only force that's resisting. So uh, our force that's resisting here, we have our positive C, I'm just gonna call it Cx, okay, and that's going to be multiplied by six. Okay, so if we go ahead and solve for Cx, okay, we're going to get that Cx is equal to 95 kilonewton. Okay, so that's 95 kilonewton. And uh, as we know, 95 minus 75, this has got to be 20. And now you can go ahead and just, uh, you know, start to, tra you can transfer this force over to here because equal and opposite. And as you can see, we can just continue here. That's pretty much exactly how you solve it. Take the moment, for example, if you'd like about C, all right, to find the reaction at D, which is 80.7. I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and do that. If you have any problems, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do a video on that for you. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. So now we uh, know the reactions, okay, and we can go ahead and we can start to fill them in. Start by uh, writing in our 20 kilonewton reaction here. Okay, we have a 58.6 kilonewton per meter reaction here. All right, we have a, uh, and we actually, we uh, once we find this uh, 144.3, okay, we need to move this over here. Okay, so we have 144.3 and 144.3 here. Sorry, that's a little messy. Okay, so we have 144.3. And for the reaction at D, okay, we have 80.7. And we have a horizontal reaction of 95. Okay, so that is the uh, the reactions of the beam. So I, I know I kind of rushed through that last part a little bit, but and it got a little bit messy. Um, but the point of the video was not to find the reactions, really. It was to show you how to do the slope deflection uh, method with settlement in order to find those end moments. This is kind of a separate topic, so I rushed through it. But really, focus on the... Uh, the slope deflection method with the settlement there and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe.